Hi guys, thanks for checking out my video. I'm coming to you from my living room. Uh, this video is about my paragraph puzzles, of which I have a variety. I have 10 months of paragraph puzzles. And this video is inspired directly by my TPT Q&A section, where I have been asked more than once about the way that I used these in the classroom and the way that I could differentiate with them if it's possible to differentiate with them. And the answer is yes, it is absolutely possible to differentiate with this one product. I'm going to share with you a variety of ways today that you can use this one paragraph writing product to differentiate for multiple needs of students. So let's talk through what the product is first. When you purchase one month's worth of paragraph puzzles, it looks like this when you download it, there are six of these. Six different paragraph topics with five sentences per paragraph. So you have an introduction sentence, you have three details. Sometimes the details include transition words, sometimes I didn't include them. It's up to you if you wanna have your students add them in, if that's like a key teaching point for you right now at this point in the year, or if you haven't gotten there yet. And then a conclusion sentence at the end. There are six of these in order. So when you print it out, it's already in order because the design of the product is for the paragraphs to be printed and cut to make a puzzle. You obviously don't have to print it on colored paper. I always did, as a teacher, printed all of the, all of one month, all six, on the same colored piece of paper, paper clipped them together, and then stored the whole year's worth in a gallon size bag so I could just pull them out. The graphic organizers are the same in each set. And this right here is one baseline way to differentiate with this product, is it's already provided for you in there. You have, Six of these that you can be using in small groups, one a day, one a week that you wanna work on, one every few days, however you wanna do it. Cut them apart, and then depending on the group that you're working with, you can have one group simply take the five different sentences and decide which one goes in the introductory slot, which sentences would go as supporting details, which sentence would be the conclusion and then have them write them in or just have them lay them there and you check them if you're trying to just reuse the same sheet of paper over and over and over again. You have a graphic organizer that asks students to fill in the topic sentence, the um, three details and the conclusion sentence, but then there is space for them to add their own example sentences. So uh, with this one, this is a January one. This is a fiction one. There is a variety of fiction and nonfiction. I, for most months, I tried to do three and three and then you could kind of pick and choose for different groups if it was best suited for them to be working with a nonfiction paragraph because those are a little bit easier to pull out topic versus detail. Whereas fiction, you really have to be paying attention to the flow of the story. Um, so there's another way you can differentiate, it's just the types of paragraphs you give them. But, so the topic sentence for this one is where the story is introduced, you get the character, and a hint at the problem right off the bat in that first sentence. Kyle held his breath while he watched the weatherman talking on TV. This is a January one, it's about a potential snow day. So it's a really good one if you're all hoping for a snow day next month. Um, so that would be topic sentence. Uh, the weatherman, or no, here we go. Three inches of snow had fallen overnight and the roads were icy. Detail. I would have the students lay out all of the details first and then see what sentences would help flow naturally as an example. But one for this one would be, um, Kyle knew that the buses could not drive on icy roads. Something like that. An additional, an example sentence, if you're familiar with stoplight writing, which is where um, we were big on that at one of my schools one year, which is where this graphic organizer came from, was the idea of that stoplight writing. I wanted the students to have spots for not just simply a five, sentence paragraph, but a full paragraph where you didn't just have a detail, but you followed it up with an additional sentence to explain it further. Um, and in the, the curriculum that I was doing that year, example was what it was called, that additional sentence, but you could call it, you know, additional sentence, explaining sentence, something like that. Your final graphic organizer is 
the just blank paragraph page and that's where you could kind of leave it open to kids to it it's for those kiddos that wouldn't necessarily need this map to help them guide guide them through which sentence would come first which sentence would be last just leave it open so this would be your higher achieving first and second graders where they just have this and they are asked to copy the paragraph over completely you could give additional instructions about you know, I want you to add transition words. If there are not transition words, I want you to add example sentences where they are appropriate, improve this paragraph, whatever you would want them to do. But this one's a little bit op more open-ended so that you can differentiate as you see fit. Now from there, here are some other ways that you can differentiate. If you are remediating paragraph writing or complete sentences or parts of a paragraph or whatever, one thing that I would recommend, this would be if you teach special ed or if you have an inclusion classroom and you have students just on all different levels, don't cut this out. Have an additional copy. This, this is in order for you as a teacher to have an answer key, but another way that you can use it is for students who are struggling with this. This is overwhelming. Two different ways that you could do it. If they really, really, really need remediation, just simply with what sentences show up in a complete paragraph, I would leave this out in front of them. Use the first graphic organizer, the basic level one, and simply have them copy the sentences over. Remember that it is a marathon, not a race with writing instruction. Some students will be in a place where they just need to see a complete paragraph modeled for them over and over and over again, and copying each sentence over to the appropriate place is fine, even if the sentences are already in order. That will obviously be too simplistic for some students. Those are not the students I recommend doing that for. Um, some students have them read this all the way through, take it away where they can't see it, and then give them this. That may be that extra visual cue that some students may need to differentiate for. That is one way to differentiate instruction if you're doing this in small groups with students who are on the lower end of their writing skills and ability at this point in the year. Some ways to differentiate for higher students. You can um, take away either the topic and conclusion and just give the students the three details and then have them come up with their own topic and conclusion sentences in a small group and then go out and share and see what do these topic and conclusion sentences have in common? Does the conclusion sentence directly reflect what the topic sentence introduced? Does, but it wraps up the paragraph. People are signaled to the fact that your paragraph is coming to an end. Is the problem resolved if it's fiction? All kinds of different ways you can go with that. Another way you can do it is just give them the introduction and the conclusion and then give them, you know, this sheet or this one's even better if they're really high achieving. Give them the two sentences that go on the top and the bottom and send them off to do a little research if it's nonfiction. I have some in here. In the January one, I think I have one about, um, I know I have one about Martin Luther King Jr. So you could give them the introduction, the conclusion, and then they have to go on Duxters or um, uh, Pebble Go, whatever, Brain Pop Jr., whatever your school has a subscription to. Do a little research and fill in relevant details about his life that would support whatever the topic sentence says. I think the topic sentence of that one is um, Martin Luther King Jr. was an important civil rights activist in the history of America or something like that. So they would need three details that support the idea that he was a civil rights activist. Discuss what that means, send them off on their merry way to create their own paragraphs about him. Another way to differentiate would be to put multiple, and this could be, you know, from low to high, lower achieving students, students that are struggling to meet expectations, just work on one, maybe work on one paragraph for a couple of days. It may take you one writing lesson to just identify what the topic sentence may be, um, depending on what you're trying to work on, because small group instruction, if you're using this for small groups, would be very direct, targeted instruction. So if you're just working on transition words, just fine in the transi transition words in one paragraph, maybe a whole lesson. So you may take a few days to work on one paragraph. Higher achieving students, you could do this in small groups with them or send them off to do it as a literacy center, which is what I did last year um, with my higher achieving students. You could put more than one paragraph in there so that the students are having to sort sentences that are related to each other. So you could have this one about the potential snow day, 
I think I have one in there about, I know I've got the Martin Luther King Jr. one. I haven't looked at it in a while, so I'm struggling to remember what else I have in there for January. I think there's another one about like the formation of snowflakes, maybe Snowflake Bentley, something science-y. Put those all in there together, two or three. All same colored paper so they can't pull apart just, oh, obviously, obviously the red ones go together and the blue ones go together. But have them really read them and decide which sentences go together so that they can sort it on their own and then write their paragraphs over. Um, another way to do it is have them work on one or two in a bag at a time, switch them out every couple of days, and then when they have worked through an entire month, then just give them this paper or, or this one and have them create their own and cut out the sentence strips and have them quiz each other on it. That would be most definitely a higher achieving group thing to do. Just throw out another January topic and have them, you know, you know, we did the Martin Luther King Jr. one. I want you to create one about Rosa Parks now that you have been modeled the way that a strong paragraph might look. Have them research, create their own, cut it apart, and then within small groups have them trade and see if they can figure out each other's topics and its conclusions and it's all of that. Um, those are just a few ways that I have either done myself or thought of off the top of my head when I was thinking of how could I differentiate with these there are sets for August through May, simply because that's modeled after my school year, those 10 months. August is only in there because it was directly asked for. Um, I did not use August just because that was our back to school month and it was always so busy. I feel the same way about June and July. I am not going to add them until they are asked for because I simply just don't wanna make the year long bundle more expensive than it needs to be for you to get two months that you may never use. So the year long bundle has the months August through May in it, six different paragraphs per month. The same three graphic organizers are included in each month. Um, and then they are bundled together for winter months, which is December through February, spring, which is March through May, um, fall, which I, I threw August in there when it was asked for, August through November. And then I have the year long bundle, which is those 10 months altogether at the biggest discount. That's, you know, the, the best bang for your buck is to buy them in larger quantity. So. Those are a few quick ideas of how to use paragraph puzzles in the classroom to strengthen your students' paragraph writing in, I designed it for the second grade classroom, I think this would work in the first grade classroom and the third grade classroom, depending on how your students' needs are structured this year and what they need from you. If you use them, please let me know because I'm curious how you have used these in the classroom, or if you're wanting to use them, let me know which method you're thinking you may wanna try, if any of these ideas sound good to you. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.